As announcer, I have been musical Daredevil, and I'm going to hand it off to Gassy Mexican. Hi everyone, I'm Gassy Mexican and I'll be hosting this block for F-Zero GX run by AKC-12. Get some donations here while setup goes on. I have a $10 donation from Twisted Anthony. This will be my first time I can donate and I'm glad I can finally help. have a $200 donation from Anonymous. Long time watcher, first time donator. I'm glad to support this wonderful cause and hope we hit a bigger goal than last year. Going, for master mo going to master mode for BOTW. Good luck to all the runners. $5 donation from John36. Hi everyone, thanks for another week of amazing runs. Money goes to DKC Reverse Boss Order because I need to watch it to believe it. Greetings from Mexico. Of a $10 Donation from Aluminum Batman. I hadn't even re realized reverse boss order, order was possible in Donkey Kong Country. Neither did I. The things you learn watching AGDQ. Have a $50 donation from Blake9 with no message. Thanks, Blake. Rhodes comes in with a $25 donation. Been watching GDQ videos on YouTube since I discovered it. Very excited to see it finally live. And just a reminder, we do still have a little ways to go, but I believe we can do it. Almost at 6,000 for the incentive for Donkey Kong Country with the reverse boss order. Have a $50 donation from Iron Brosif. Have to get this in while Gassy is announcing. Can we get a I can smell you? I can smell you. It's a random reference. We have a follow up donation from Wiza225, the $145. 24 hits times $5 plus the $25 for the announcer getting my name right. GG Mickley, great run.
Got a $10 donation from Initial Nisinko. Second year watching GD GDQ. Hollow Knight is gorgeous. So happy someone is running it. Good luck to all the runners. Have a hundred dollar donation from Anonymous. Thank you very much. Have a thirty dollar donation from Griffin Q. Greetings and salutations. Long time watcher or long time watching older brother for with a first time younger brother on the couch with me completely hooked. Too bad it's 80%. The Grim Fight is my favorite. But I'm sure it will be an awesome run nonetheless. Thank you all so much for the entertainment you provide, and let's show cancer who's boss. I have a $20 donation from F3. I've been watching for many years. My friends and family were struck by cancer multiple times in 2017. So I'm more than happy to donate to this great event. Keep it up. I have an, an anonymous donation with $200 saying, love watching speedrunning and love the cause. Keep up the fantastic work. Thanks to all the crew and runners. Also, another quick reminder, we're currently at 2,662 of the 5,000 to get that 100% Aladdin run. So if you're interested in that, be sure to get those donations in. The Mad Irishman donates $35 and says, donate to a great cause with a chance to win cool stuff. Shut up and take my money. $50 from the Curious Kai with a $50 tip. I already said that. Reverse boss, I thought speedrunning was supposed to break games, not my mind. Well, let's make that a thing. I have $5 from Nathan saying, keep going fast, watching from home with my amazing girlfriend, and we love what we are seeing. Put this towards the Yoshi's Island Warbles race. Cheers from Canada. Another $5 from Dakota Dance. Had to donate after finding out Gassy Mexican is at AGDQ. Golf with a friend sometime? <laughs> it's my first time and I'm having a blast. Once again, we're about to go into F-Zero GX run with AKC-12 with some final prep going on. At $20 from Absutus, F-Zero GX is back to GDQ and I'm all fired up. This game gave me so many wonderful hours. Good luck to all the runners and donation goes to Runner's Choice. Greetings from Austria. We have an anonymous $500 donation. Thank you very much.
Another $150 donation from Anonymous. Learned about AGDQ last year while looking up F-Zero GX runs. My, my grandfather beat cancer while I was in boot camp almost five years ago before succumbing to a blood infection in 2014. So anything to help fight cancer has my full support. Thanks for everything you guys do. Don't put me in any prize bracket. This is only to support a fantastic cause. Have an anonymous donation of $50. Keep up the good work. Lothias with $10 saying, what a wonderful event for a great cause. Good luck to all the runners and all the folks behind the scenes. Donation goes to Max's Choice. For anyone wondering, I will be doing the reverse boss order for my incentives, any donations for my choice. And I believe we are just about ready to go. So AKC12, take it away with F-Zero GX. GX runner from XP. Behind me is Draco Dan, who used to play GX some time ago. So this category here is All Tracks Time Attack. And just as a quick note, Max Speed is one of the three main play styles for F0 GX. The uh, snaking is 0%, where you swerve left and right to gain a lot of speed. Very hard, hard on the hand, so I don't play that. Then there's the open ladder where you can do checkpoint skipping with space flying. And this is the max speed where only 100% is allowed. Yeah. Max speed is like the main category. It plays the most like how you would normally think of seeing a racing game. Um, it'll still be very fast, don't worry. Yeah, um, it, it sounds like the um, vanilla category, but there is a lot of tech which is exclusive to max speed. So this is still going to be a good show. Yeah. So a quick rundown of the category. I'll be running through all 26 tracks through the time attack mode. I won't be loading the staff ghost, so I'll just go from one to the next in order. Yeah, until... Just show off the courses. Yep. All right, I'm all set. So countdown, I guess. Go ahead and give a countdown. You guys can do it. Okay. Right. Three, Three, two, two one, one, go. And a little cut, skip, cut scene skip right here. Just press A. Yeah. Um, so I'll just kind of talk about like different tech that's going on as it comes up. Uh, first thing you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of this drifting here. Um, different vehicles play differently, but the vehicle he's using here uh, uses this drift a lot. It's called MTS, um, Momentum Throttle Slide. Basically, uh, there's a glitch where if you turn sideways and lose grip, then um, your strafing engine becomes really strong to like pull you forward. So he's turning sideways and strafing forward, basically. Shift boost, yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. Well, that Ooh. was really fast. Um, you do it all on the opener. Um, on boost laps, so basically starting on lap two, you can exchange your health, which is the bar on the top right, uh, your energy. You can exchange it to go fast, which is what he does for most of the run. Um, this run is insane right now, actually, uh, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, hang on. Wait, can you get it? Nah, nah. too much energy. Oh. Okay. He was going to go for a suicide. Ah. That 47 is insane. Without <laughs> so, yeah. a suicide. Yeah. Congrats for that. A suicide is something that you're going to see quite a lot of in this run, yeah. as um, there is quite a bit of time between the vehicle being destroyed when you take damage at zero energy to actually coming to a stop and dying. If, while the vehicle is destroyed and still moving, you still clear the finish line, it still counts. Yeah. And using a suicide in the right place with the right angles can give you a phenomenal speed boost. Yeah. So the physics of uh, your vehicle change pretty significantly once, uh, once you cross the finish line. You basically become really bouncy like a pinball. You just like bounce around and go really fast. Uh, so sometimes there'll be setups on certain courses to get them. Um, that course, Swiss Road, has a couple. Yeah. But um, the thing I was saying about the energy is basically once you start boost laps, you exchange your energy for speed. Um, so the, the openers always look a little bit different than the boost laps. Um, so this is split over here. Uh, he's going to be using Fat Shark, which is a uh, default like standard vehicle of the game. Um, nah, he's going to make it back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this course is pretty simple. Basically, it's just got a ton of boosters, and the goal is to get a bunch of them if you can. And then um, there's like a little split. He always takes the side with the boosters because it's faster. The other side has refiller, but you don't really need it because um, it's short enough course. Yeah. And then there's the big jump, um, where if you're going too fast, you fly off and die. But if you handle it just correctly, then um, you can fly through the air and like fly over part of the course. 
Okay. Oh. <laughs> so he messed it up a little bit there, but um, he, he managed to save it. Yeah. Um, Being able to survive is the main thing in yeah. a lot of courses. There's a lot of tricks um, throughout a lot of courses that do carry with them a risk of death, and being that there are three laps in each race, it's possible to die in a bad spot on some tracks and lose a lot of time from taking a lap three so that was that was what a good jump looks like. Mm -hmm. um, not even the best he can do, but that was a pretty successful one. Um, yeah. So um, as David was mentioning before as well, currently we're using the vehicle Fat Shark. There are a few different vehicles used in the run. This vehicle is used in a lot of tracks because the different vehicles have a lot of different parameters for their own stats such as body, boost strength, max speed, um, handling, stuff like that. A lot of Fat Shark's parameters are just really high. Like, it has one of the best top speed in the game, one of the best boosters. It's got really high acceleration. It's a very useful vehicle. Yeah, uh, basically, it's one of the heaviest vehicles that you use. It's the heaviest uh, standard vehicle, but it also has, like, the highest boost strength and the highest acceleration. So yeah. it becomes useful in any place that has a lot of boosters. Um, yeah, like boost pickup and boost duration are treated as two different stats. Like the boost stat looks like a single figure there, but it's basically divided between pickup speed and duration. And Fat Sharks is really good for both of them. Yeah, I think it has the longest duration speed of all the standard it vehicles. Does, yeah, yeah. Um, of actually any vehicle. So there are also custom vehicles in this game, which I'll talk more about later. But that was the vehicle he used on the first course. Uh, so here he's using Black Bull. Um, it's the other uh, standard vehicle that he's going to be using occasionally in the run, mm -hmm. uh, except for like one other case he'll use a different one. Um, but basically, the thing about this vehicle is that its MTS is pretty strong. Uh, it's pretty similar to Quickstar in like how you use it, which is the vehicle used on the first course. But um, the added weight makes it drive a little bit differently. So they're just useful in, for different courses in different ways. Yeah, um, like Black Bull loses traction extremely easily, which you'd normally think is a bad thing. But for applying MTSs like this, it's very useful because you can basically force a loss of traction anywhere. Yeah, and then on top of that, um, it also has pretty good str uh, strafe strength. So the amount that like when you're holding the straight button, if you like, you move to the side, is is just a raw stat, and mm -hmm. his it's is pretty good. And then also, um, its turn strength, while it doesn't have grip, also plays a factor. There's a ton of like different stats that go into it, but overall, it just comes out to being a really good vehicle for MTS training. So on courses without a lot of boosters and without a lot of energy, um, Black Bull's good for it. Um, yeah. It doesn't have very good boost strength, but if there isn't very much energy to use and very many boosters to hit, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, there are a lot of situations as well where you don't even want to be boosting, such as if you're above a certain speed, so it's not too much of a handicap for a uh, vehicle to have a weaker booster, depending on the situation. Yeah, so kind of talking about that, um, there's a tech in this game called MT. It's actually like probably the most important tech in the game, the first or second most, um, where essentially um, if you're above your max speed and you're holding A, which is the engine button, um, your speed will be pulled down to your max speed. So if you're going like 1800, Normal vehicles, the speed cap is around like 1100. Then, assuming you're not boosting, oh, that was a good time. Yeah. Um, but assuming you're not boosting, uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Only about two seconds off my PB there. Yeah, so that was his fourth best. With that. Fourth best time. Um, but if you're going above, well above your max speed, then you want to hold the, you want to have the engine off because, like, if you're going 1800, your speed would pull down to 1100. But if you're not holding A, then. Uh, Basically, your speed will decelerate fairly linearly. Yeah. And it'll be a lot slower. So. Es essentially, each vehicle has their own set max speed. So different vehicles have different max speeds. But the general consensus seems to be that if you're above, I think it's about 200 of your max speed, you want the engine off. Because as um, David said, if your engine is off, the deceleration is linear. But if you have the engine on, it's actually exponential, where like it drops a lot faster and then slows down as you get closer to your max speed. Yeah. So you can actually see he's doing it too when he's doing these MTSs. It's kind of hard to see because it's the red sparks next to it. But whenever he's like drifting, his engine actually turns off. So like you see, you stop seeing those three white lines behind it. Yeah. Um, and then when he like exited to do the side attacks, you have to hold A in order to be able to side attack, which is why he has to do that. But um, so he's basically mashing between that. Uh, the, the inputs for MTS training are like super complicated. Basically, yeah. you have to like um, to do the MTS, you have to hold left and R or right and L, so like opposite strafe to your direction. But then to do the chain, you have to hold both L and R, and yeah. then turn the other direction and press A and mash B a couple of times. Um, so There is a slight optimization that's going on at all times as well, which is a little difficult to even see if you don't know what you're looking for. Every time he reaches a boost pad, because you can use boost pads as well as your own manual boost, he's trying to clip the very edge of the boost pad because it gives you a slightly stronger boost. Oh, yeah. Um, so some of them are easier to set up than others, depending on like your speed coming in. And if you miss it a little bit, like it doesn't really matter. Like if you or, if like you can't line up for it and you just hit the boost regularly, that's fine. Yeah. But, um, it's, I think it's about a 10% increase from getting an optimal boost. Yeah, that sounds about right. 
Um, not really sure why it happens. I think it has something to do with like getting the boost, uh, the booster twice. I think so, yeah. Because um, I think the sound effect plays twice when you get it. Yeah. Uh, also, another little optimization. The thing I was saying about uh, the MT. Uh, so whenever you use energy, um, whenever you use energy to boost, um, your boost length lasts a certain amount of time. So like with Black Bull, it's 1.85 seconds. But then as soon as that 1.85 seconds is done, then your boost will stop. Um, but there's a short like couple frame delay before you can boost again. So you actually want to release A during that time because at, the, the, at that time, then you're above your max speed. Um, so you just have to release A for a little bit. So if you just see when he's like driving straight and just boosting constantly, he'll like release A for a moment. You'll see like the engine flash. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like much because it just sounds like a few frames, but the difference in the speedometer is quite noticeable. Yeah. That if you just hold A solidly and keep boosting, you'll struggle to get it above a certain value. But if you apply MT effectively, you can get like another couple hundred kilometers yeah. per hour out of it easy. Yeah. It definitely adds up to like a couple hundred uh, if you're just driving straight and boosting. Um, okay, so here he's doing multiplex. Um, there's a lot of things going on. This is like a super technical course. Um, but he's using Fat Shark here because it has a lot of boosters. Um, already he's going really fast. Um, yeah. So there's a, um, a thing in this game called a shift boost, where essentially if you catch air for just a moment um, and then land back on the ground, then you get a burst of speed. Uh, I think it has to do with the physics changing from handling like how it handles you on the ground to how it handles you in the air. Um, something along those lines. This mm -hmm. is kind of complicated, but... Um, Essentially, when you do those, it gives you quite a bit of speed. It gives more speed the higher acceleration you have and the heavier your vehicle is. And Fat Shark is very heavy and has high acceleration, so it's really good for both of those. Um, yeah. You'll see them a lot more in later cups, like in Diamond Cup, you'll see a ton. Yeah. Um, but he got a couple right at the bat, like right off the bat, um, on lap one. And like speaking of being um, on the ground as opposed to being airborne. Being airborne in itself um, includes a couple of differences in how it's played in this game. Generally speaking. One of the things you've already seen him do quite a bit is use a lot of side attacks while in the air. That um, adds up to a lot of speed gain. You can also nose dive to rapidly accelerate until you hit the ground. Yeah, so like right there, he like pointed down. Um, you'll yeah. side attack if like you're at an angle and you're falling at an angle. But since you have to be turning to do side attacks, then you only use it if you're in situations like that. Yeah. So here he'll just point down. The only difficulty with nose diving as well is that if you just nose dive straight into the ground, you will lose a lot of speed. You want to nose dive towards the ground and then level out just before you hit the ground. Yeah, but then even on top of that, once you start leveling out, then you have to release A, because when you level out, you're going to lose speed, mm. and if you're not holding A, you lose less. Yeah. Also, something right there, so there are mines, which are just like a part of this game. Um, if you hit them, you take damage, but if you hit them straight on, um, if you hit them straight on, you get like a burst of speed. I believe it's actually a shift boost that actually happens. Mm. Um, so there were a couple places there where he crashed into mines intentionally. Yeah, and um, at the end of a lot of tracks here, we're also going to see those rail slides. We had MTs, we had MTSs. That's an MTRS, a momentum for all rail slide. Yeah. You'll see it on next course. Uh, at the end of it, you'll see a really good rail slide. But yeah. essentially, you're just doing an MTS against a wall. Um, it's always performed at the end of a track, like at the end of lap three, because it gives you a huge speed boost when you perform it. But once you exit it, you'll lose pretty much all your speed. Yeah, there's a couple of places on a couple of courses where you can utilize them. Mm -hmm. um, like there's one on surface slide, there's a couple on ordeal, which is of course later on, it's a few other courses, but for the most part, you pretty much only use it at the end. Um, so this is Drift Highway, he's using Quickstar again. Um, I guess I'll explain custom vehicles a little bit. Essentially, there's one engine and one cockpit that you use almost all the time. The, um, the cockpit's the heaviest cockpit you can get and it gives the like best turning strength. Um, so there's really like no reason to use any other cockpit. And then the engine um, that it's using nice. is like a sweet, oh, okay, that was, Oh my god, this is really good. Okay, oh. <laughs> so um, holding the talk on the custom vehicles for a minute. Basically, um, so talking about shift boost, there's something called an MTS and a shift boost, where if you see when he's doing like the MTS drifting, his speed number goes up. It's so, like right there, he got up to like 2700 for just a minute. Um, hang on. Are you gonna go for it? No, no okay. way. Oh. Okay. Uh, so there's a uh, suicide finish you can do there. You smack into that back wall at that last corner. <laughs> and he's going really fast. <laughs> I was hoping he'd go for it, but. <laughs> yeah, the, the results vary massively depending on the angle that you hit the wall, though. Like, yeah. it, it's precise enough that unless you have a very specific setup, there's a lot of situations where you just cannot predict where you're going to go after it. I actually got PB here while practicing, just yeah. like <laughs> less than ago. an hour ago, yeah. yeah. Um, so you were saying that the um, cockpit and the engine's the same, but what yeah. about the body? So the body is the biggest thing that varies. Basically, um, there's just 10 different bodies. They have varying different stats, like the strength value, the uh, body value, the weight, um, the turning value, grip, and a bunch of other things. Um, there's 
pretty much the one that we use the most is the one that he's using right here. And you're going to see it more in the run. Um, this vehicle is Gallant Star. Basically, it's one of the heaviest you can make, but um, its grip is loose enough that it can actually do MTSs, whereas like the heavier ones, uh, it's really hard to lose grip to do them. And then um, it also has better strafe value, so it can get more speed out of it. Um, what you're seeing here is side attack turning, where with really heavy vehicles, especially like heavy custom vehicles, if you just side attack and strafe and turn on the ground, your speed goes up. So it's, it's normal max speed is around like 11, 1200. It's going like 1500 for short moments. Also, you're going to see something really cool here. And I'll explain it after. So, as we lead, let on a little bit about, um, this thing's called side attack dives, where essentially if you do the same side attack turning thing I was talking about on the ground, but if you do it in the air while pointing down, it makes a lot more of a difference. It builds up a ton of speed. So, um, he got up to like, I think, I didn't see the speedometer, probably around 3,000 for a minute while in the air. And then if you're going that fast, you can just level out and you'll just float for a little bit. And it ends up being substantially faster than uh, driving on the ground, like down these steps. So he's going to do it all three laps here. Yeah, because like, bear in mind, with conventional driving, this game doesn't really expect you to break 2,000 very often. Yeah. You can reach insane speeds with the tech in this game. Oh! Okay. Yeah. So deaths are pretty common in this game. Like, for, <laughs> um, for the most part, um, you don't really expect where stuff's going to happen. But like you, like, you don't expect that kind of death to happen. But it'll just happen. So yeah. it's all accounted for in the estimate. Like, the potential for this run is probably like, over 20 minutes faster than what the estimate is, but um, so that's fine if it happens. Um, what was I saying? Uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Anyway, um, but yeah, so, so pretty much that's what the dive is, uh, is doing. So he dives, you see his speed gets to like 3,000, levels out, and then he lands. Um, Okay, so what I was explaining before, going back a little bit, um, an MTS and a shift boost, which will probably come up in a few other cases later. Uh, essentially, if you do an MTS, uh, your speed number gets up pretty high. So if you tap A as you're going over a little lump in the ground, um, you can catch air on that lump, and then you'll get the, the speed gain from a shift boost, which is how he was able to go so fast on last course, because uh, he got like a bunch of them. And they were like, probably the hardest tech in the game to do, mm. if not the second hardest, I'm not sure. Um, one thing you'll notice as he's coming around this section again and reaches the end of the track, you thought he was dead there. <laughs> Once he reaches this scary. very steep hill here, he's going to cut the engine like again for a brief moment because if you go up a steep hill like that with the engine fully engaged, it's the same as being above your max speed where it'll force you to decelerate very quickly. Yeah, so essentially um, up and down slopes in this game play a pretty big part, like more than you would think. Because down slopes are like little lumps are how you get MTS into shift boosts. And then um, up slopes, when you're going up an up slope, you're Top speed is reduced significantly, um, just for like a very short moment. So if you hold A, oh well, oh. So he barely grazed the walls. So now you get to see him go down the steps, nice and slowly. Yeah. And this is what it would look like if he didn't do that skip. Yeah. This is what the game expects you to do. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you can see how much slower that is. Yeah. So that happens sometimes because you have to take the turn pretty tightly. Oh yeah. So here you're gonna see a really good rail slide because there's a nice long wall for it. So he oh, zipped man. up to almost <laughs> almost 4,000 there. And you can go even faster if you're incoming. Like, you can break 5,000 on that. Yeah. So there's a lot of situations, like, especially if you watch, like, um, actual time attack videos of this game, you'll often see people try and get, like, an optimal rail slide into an optimal suicide finish. Yeah. And so you just go really, really fast. Yeah. So, so, like, if you die during the rail slide, you'll just kind of get, like, a forceful, like, push forward. Yeah. Um, you might see it, depending on how it comes. Pretty much it just, if, you're in, if your health works out, then you'll just do it, and it's just faster, so. Um, so this course is Mobius Ring. Uh, it's just like a Mobius trip. Uh, you drive on both sides of it, or I guess this side, depending on technicality. Um, basically, it's just an oval. Uh, there's not really a lot to it, except um, it's going to be MTS chaining for a lot of it. And uh, he's going to utilize mind boost pretty significantly. Um, he's going to do like a triple mind boost on the opener, and then probably one mind boost on each lap. Um, yeah. Mines are both kind of like a blessing and a curse, because they can give you a... Um big speed boost, but like depending on the angle that you hit them, they can be very unpredictable. Yeah, so like right there, he kind of like hit it barely on the side, so I pushed him to the side into the wall and he lost his speed, but you'll see it probably again on, um, on boost laps better. So this course, the record actually uses um, Gallant Star, and Gallant Star probably has the potential to be a little bit faster, but um, Black Bowl is a little bit easier, and then also, in the case of this run, um, it's a lot faster because you have to load the custom machines, which takes like a couple seconds. Um, so the difference in speed that you can get is, um, or like the difference in time that it saves is not enough. Yeah. 
it's worth mentioning as well with the mine boosts that like once a mine has been hit, it doesn't regenerate. So if you're planning to use mines to go faster, you do need to plan spots to use different mines on different three laps. Yeah. So like in this case, he gets like the triple mine boost on the first lap because he doesn't. Since normally mines do damage to you, and especially with like black bullets, uh, body value isn't like particularly high. Um, yeah. The game says that it is, but the game's stats lie a lot. Yeah. The, the letters are literally just ripped from F0X, which is the uh, N64 version, and like most of them are pretty inaccurate. Um, but like he uses the triple mind boost on lap one because it doesn't matter that he loses a bunch of energy because he's gonna get a refill later. Um, so up next, er, go ahead. Yeah, um, you guys can say some donations right now. Then this this next course is fairly boring, fairly straightforward. Yeah, it's Not mostly just like slight optimizations. So mm -hmm. true thing. I have a $50 donation from I Hate Elvis saying, thrilled to see F-Zero GX in AGDQ this year. Good luck, AKC. Thank you. I have another one from Jonathan B. First time donating to AGDQ. Good luck to all the runners and, wor and good work to everyone behind the scenes. Put my donation towards runner's choice. I have a $30 donation from Durag. My mother beat cancer this year, and I can't think of a better way to celebrate than by naming the Breath of the Wild Horse Mom. Happy AGDQ. Another $11 from Ben and Jake. I watch AGDQ every year with my dad. Every year my dad donates for me, but this year I'm donating with my own money. From me and my little brother. Keep up the great work, and let's kill cancer. $10 donation from Anonymous. First time donor, got to get in for those Hollow Knight goodies. So really quick, slight optimization there. He just like waited a bit to boost because if you start through the string of boosters here at, um, like if you wait to boost and you come through at like a slightly higher boost speed, then you go through this entire section going faster. So rather than boosting right at the beginning of the lap, um, it's just a little bit better to wait a little bit. So just like a slight thing there. A five dollar donation from Bitsmall had to donate during F Zero GX, one of my favorite games of all time. It's hard to believe it's been 14 years since the last F Zero game came out. So here's to hoping we get a new entry on the Switch. Amen. We have a thousand dollar donation Whoa. from Ooh, Fan wow. Gamer. From Fangamer68 saying, what an amazing weekend of support for hurricane victims. Big, big thanks to everyone who donated. Thanks to all the runners and the GDQ staff who put this together in a flash. And thank you to everyone who bought some Fangamer GDQ merch. We wouldn't have been able to make this donation without you. The news has been really rough lately, but seeing so many people come together to help others in such a big way brings me to tears. Keep doing good, y'all. See you at AGDQ. There you go, that was a pretty good run. That actually beats my personal best by like two seconds. <laughs> really? It yeah. wasn't that great for me. <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> so up next is Serial Gaps. Uh, it's a really cool course. Uh, I'm not going to say anything until after it happens, hopefully. Um, but assuming it goes well, it should be really impressive. Yeah. All you know is a lot of people really hate trying to just drive this course. Yeah. It's cool, though. Yeah, I'll be using a fairly safe start here, so I don't lose a bunch of time here. So. Yeah. But if but he dies here a couple times, it's probably expected, so that'll be fine. Um, Still gonna look cool, though. Okay. Oh, well. That's exactly what I mean about the mines being unpredictable. He was banking yeah. on getting a different kind of collision there. Yeah. You'll still get to see most of what he was trying to show on the boost laps. Uh, a slightly easier version of it, um, but... So that was the first half. Oh. Why don't you do more with that, but I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> You can do the easier version of that skip and then show off the second one on this lap, probably. That's probably what I do.
So it's this, and then... All right, here we go. That. So, um, basically, if that course is done totally correctly, uh, you see both of those skips all three laps, um, but it's pretty hard to do. But at least you got to show off some of the skips, so that's good. So up next is going to be Emerald Cup. Um, this cup is just full of Fast Shark courses. Four, the first four use Fast Shark. Um, a lot of them just have like a lot of boosters and a lot of shift boost uh, opportunities. So you'll see a lot of that for a while. Um, this first course is Cylinder Knot. Uh, it's basically the other side of a pipe. You're on the outside. And this course just has a lot of, a lot of boosters on it. And um, there's several different shift boost opportunities. Um, most of them, or several of them, have like pretty easy setups. And then some of them are a little bit harder. So like right there, he like kind of shook for a little bit. But if you do that a little bit better, you can get a shift boost. Uh, you can get that shift boost there. You, um, you can get an MTS and a shift boost on that drop, but it's really hard to do. Um, also, there he was going for the edge edge boost. So that happens sometimes. You're just trying to line up, and you barely miss it. So uh, here, this is set up for a double shift boost um, coming up on this lump here. Okay, so he only got one, but... I let go of H early? That was odd. Yeah. But if you get it, then you can get, like, over 2,000. Yeah. Then... This, this is just a really important track to have a good understanding of exactly where the placement of the boost panels is, because as you can see, they're only situated on small parts. Then They don't completely surround the track. So being that it is a cylinder, you need to know exactly where you need to be at all times to get the boosts. Yeah. And then also, it doesn't look like it, but driving on cylinders is actually really hard. Um, yeah. If you aren't driving, like, quite with the grain of the cylinder, um, then... You'll be facing like a downslope on the course, and then so you'll catch air. And um, something I haven't explained yet, which he's been doing, is a quick turn, where um, it's pretty much how you turn most of the time. You lose grip by pressing both L and R, and then you release the trigger of the direction you don't want to turn. So you press like L and R, and then if you want to turn left, you press L and left. There and go. Um, yeah, that was the double shift boost. So you can see he's going really fast. Um, so the reason why quick turns are important is because you can turn a lot sharper than you would be otherwise. But if you catch air, then when you're in the air, your vehicle functions as if it has grip as far as how it turns and stuff. Also, that was an MTS in the shift boost. That was really good. Uh, that one's really hard to get, and he got a lot of speed out of it. Um, but if you catch air, then you can't do a quick turn because you don't have, you have grip again. So it messes with your control a lot. Um, hmm. It's worth noting that... Um on top of what we mentioned before about using MT, cutting the engine while you're above your top speed, even when he uses a boost panel, um, you do want to hold the A button for that because you can't actually accelerate while boosting without holding the A button. Oh, yeah. So slight, slight clarification on that. Basically, you only hold the A button to do things that would give you speed, and then you release the A button whenever you're not doing things that give you speed. Yeah. That's pretty much like an easy way to put it. And the timing is different between using boost pads and using a manual boost because the boost duration from a boost pad is shorter than a manual boost. Yeah, it's half as much, but the boost strength is stronger, so they, they usually come out to giving you about the same amount of speed. Yeah, it only really matters for the purpose of getting good MT, since as we said, once a boost is finished, holding A for additional frames just causes you to de decelerate faster. Yeah, so that's a 226. That's a really good time. That beats my PV. <laughs> I feel like that'll happen a lot. Really good. Yeah. You're gonna place about how many times that's gonna happen through this run? <laughs> I'm afraid to know the number. <laughs> um, so, or, yeah. So this is gonna be intersection. Um, basically, this course has a pipe that um, kind of like laces through the track, and then um, there's like one strip of the track where you kind of drive around it. So you can see like on the mini map on the right side, there's like the pipe that bends back and forth through it. Um, on each of those bends, there's an opportunity to get a shift boost or sometimes a double shift boost if you're lucky. So a lot of this course comes down to how well you can get those. Um, so you can see he's going to try and get as many as he can. Um, but basically, you just line up on a certain part of the pipe, and then um, you tap A at the right time, like that. Ooh, nice. And you tap A again, again. <laughs> so that was really good. He missed the first one, but then the rest of it was really fast. And chaining those together is actually like really hard. Um, so he got that really well. And then here's the part where it goes back and forth. You actually like go back and forth across to get these different boosters, which looks kind of hard, but actually it's not too bad. But this turn right here is like really bad. Yeah, that's um, the turn that you want to uh, take a rare break for sometimes. Yeah, so you can go too fast and just fly straight off the track. Yeah, if you don't handle it quite right, it's really dangerous. Um, but actually one thing that you do, um, instead of slowing down for it, um, this game kind of has like glitched physics when you're going up an upslope and you're going fast enough. 
where your vehicle becomes really clingy. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically the reason why he doesn't MTS through that turn, outside of just the fact that it's fast, is um, it gets him going fast enough that he gets the glitched up slope physics. So he clings to the ground really well. And like, there's a place where the ground drops. I'll just like point it out, like, um, like right there, that little ground drop. If he was, if he didn't have the glitched up slope physics, then he would have caught air and probably flown over the rail. Yeah. But since he had that, it just kind of caused his vehicle to stick to the ground. Um, it's really like weird, obscure thing that happens. Um, but it's useful in some places, so. I just missed that last one for whatever reason. Oh well. Yeah, this is good though. Sub two, nice. 159, nice. nice. That's a really good time. Yeah, not many people have sub two minutes here, even in Niles. Yeah. Yeah, that was like his fifth best time that he's ever gotten. <laughs> you can see if he makes top 10, then like on the score the score screen, or like this time screen at the end where it shows his laps. And like the bottom left, it says like fifth place or whatever, if it's within the top, uh, top 10, so. Yeah, so this course is uh, double branches. It's gonna be the first place you'll see off course shift boost, which um, essentially, like I was saying, to get a shift boost, you have to catch air for a moment. Um, and normally the way to do that is to like go over a little a little lump on the ground at the right speed. What you can also do is you can also just go off the like off the side of the course for a moment and come back on. And if you do it fast enough, then you won't die. You'll make it back onto the course. Yeah. Uh, if you do it too slowly, you'll die. These so are really difficult. Yeah, they're really dangerous. Um, they. The difficulty is like mitigated based on a couple of factors. Like when you're going faster, it's a bit easier to deal with, and depending on the gradient, such as if you're going downhill, it's a little more forgiving. Yeah. So you'll see in um, um, next cup, there's a couple courses that have some easier shift boosts. Um, but definitely a big thing is how fast you're going, because the faster you're going, um, the like the less you fall, yeah, or the slower you fall, assuming you're not pointed down. So there is a couple of spots in this course as well, such as just um, before there, where uh, last track I mentioned about braking to not get any air, that is borderline forced in this track. Yeah. Like, there's um, one of the specific turns there. It seems to be if you're above, like, 1,500, you will yeah. just come away from the track and you basically cannot get back. Yeah, it's somewhere around a little, little above 1,400. Uh, a lot of this game, since it's like an anti-gravity racer, you're actually driving upside down. Um, so the issue is if you lift off the track when you're upside down, uh, your vehicle flips back over and you can't make it back onto the track. So if you're going fast enough, when the course bends down, then you're going to die. Okay, so right there also you saw like the glitched up slope physics. One of the things is if you're doing an MTS, um, your vehicle just kind of like hangs sideways and just kind of sticks there. So if you get enough speed on the, uh, like doing the shift boost, then you can get it. So if he gets it on lap three, I'll like point it out again. Um, we can see like right there, he's doing an MTS because when you exit an MTS, like you're gonna have a little bit less speed. So it's just kind of a good way to like utilize that speed temporarily um, since you need to slow down anyway. Because when you're doing the MTS, you just get a little bit further forward, so. Oh. Oh, <laughs> why did I do that? See, every single one just feels so free until you mess up one, and yeah. then you lose like two minutes. I was about to say something about it. It looks like he's not bothering because it's too dangerous on lap three. <laughs> So it's a lot more dangerous right there because the track's like upward a little bit. Okay, so like right there, he like turned sideways and just kind of like sat there for a minute instead of like turning. Even though he was facing to the right, he didn't actually move to the right uh, just because of that glitched up slope physics, but kind of a minor thing. That's how you do it. That was a really good side effect dive there. All right, that was the last time I'll do that.
We have a $20 donation from Grant Parker. Really cool to see F-Zero at lightning fast speeds. Monies to playing DKC for the setup block one reverse boss order. Yeah, so if you don't go for shift boost, it's faster to like drop down there and just get more boosters instead. Good time. Not bad. 222. Especially if we're not going for any shift boost on lap three. We have twenty dollars from Anonymous. Amazing cause. Amazing people. Amazing games. Yeah. So up next is going to be um, half pipe. Uh, this course has a lot of shift boost opportunities. It also has a lot of places you can die, uh, since there's no walls anywhere. Um, but especially starting off here, there's going to be a setup to go for a double shift boost which will allow for a pretty cool skip. Um, I guess he'll reset a couple times going for it, and if he can't get it, then he'll just move on, but... Um, yeah. It seems to be easier on lap one, though, since your speed is pretty much always going to be the same when you start, and this is influenced by speed. Really? Going to try to get the double shift boost there. Yeah. So basically, if you drive over that little drop at just the right speed, then you get a double shift boost. So we have a kind of consistent setup for it. Um, yeah, there, there we go. go. Instant 2200. And jump because of that speed. And another jump. So this course starts off pretty crazy, um, really fast. And pretty much that speed carries through all the way to like about here. Like he only just slowed down. Oh yeah. Ooh. Off course shift boost there. Um, usually they're pretty hard on the half pipe because um, since you have to be sideways on the wall. I've never seen that shift boost before. That was cool. Um, usually since you're sideways in the half pipe, like, if you try and strafe off, then, like, your vehicle will try and correct its angle, so it'll be weird, but, um, also, he was going for a setup to slow down a little bit to get the double shift boost again, because it legitimately saves, like, three or four or seconds, or more, possibly, uh, if you get it, um, and since he started the lap going normal speed anyway, okay, uh. so, uh, he actually got a shift boost there right before the jump, um, but his angle was like a little bit off, which is why it was kind of dangerous, but he made it back, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, like the shift boost that he went for the off course one, like right there, where he just passed on lap one, is because like the course is like twisting, uh, there happens to be like a little spot where the, you're just about flat with the ground, so you have like a little bit more opportunity to actually get it and make it back on. Um, just as a marker of just how good that lap one was as well. Just look at the lap times. Normally, you would expect to see lap one being the slowest lap because you don't have access to boost power, but that lap one was so clean that it's like a full yeah. three seconds faster. Yeah. Also, he slowed down there to try and get the, uh, the shift boost on lap three. Um, Unlucky with those shift boosts there. It's kind of random whether you get it or not. Yeah, there's just like a little lump on the ground. If you just drive over it going fast enough, you get it usually. But 216 is pretty good. Not bad at all. So um, on the next course here, uh, coming up is uh, Big Blue Ordeal. You're going to see Gallant Star pretty much being used to its full potential. Um, Gallant Star's biggest thing, on top of the few things that I mentioned, Basically, it's really heavy, which is why its side attack dives are really good. Um, and this course has a lot of side attack dives, uh, so it's going to build up a lot of speed. There's also a couple cool skips you can go for, um, several on this course. Um, so hopefully those work out. We have a $100 donation from Turtle Freak. Wow, I had to donate during this F-Zero run. It's my favorite racing game, and you're just destroying every track. It's really fun to see. Yo, you got it. Nice. Nice. Okay, that skips is a lot harder on lap one. He got it. Uh, so that was really good. 
basically the the track actually like loops around to the right, like around the building. You just kind of like go around it the other way instead. <laughs> Yeah, so here he's doing a little bit of MTS training. Um, Gallant's actually like the hardest vehicle of any of the top vehicles to MTS chain. Uh, also, there's an opportunity of a rail slide being used outside of the end of a track. Um, just kind of works out there to like exit the rail slide and then you do like a little bit of side attack dive. <sighs> oh, he got the full skip. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that full skip is really difficult. Um, on top of it being hard to execute, you also have to be going really fast um, going into it. That might actually probably be the hardest part, is making sure you're going fast enough on the way in. Uh, but he got it, so. Yeah, yeah, that it, wasn't optimal, but I made but it, yeah, so whatever. It. Um, it's kind of hard to like see exactly where the track is, because it's a little bit narrow right where you land. And on top of that, like you're looking through a waterfall, so it's just like a little bit blurred. Yeah. Um, also here, it's pretty pretty consistent suicide. <laughs> uh, he got over 4,000 there. Um, Probably save this. Saves a second, so it's worth it. Fairly safe. Yeah, the nature of the track being as narrow as it is and it's going up a hill, it shoots you pretty consistently straight forward. Yeah, just like the slight curve upwards just kind of like bounces you perfectly. And like each time you bounce, you get build up a little bit of speed. Okay, so here is um, Diamond Cup. Um, this has the hardest courses in the game. Yeah. Um, especially this first course. Um, this Basically, this course has a lot of narrow sections where there's no, there's no walls just about anywhere on the course. There's like a couple small places where there's some walls, but uh, hardly anywhere. And um, there's like the areas where it splits into three, which is why it's called Trident. And basically on this course, he's just gonna abuse shift boost as much as possible. Yeah. Um, the world record is insanely fast. Um, so you could spend like days on this course and never finish a run if you're trying really hard. So he's not gonna go as crazy as possible, um, but he's got a strat worked out for which ones he's gonna go for, especially more on the opener, because they're less punishing to miss, because you only lose 30 seconds or whatever instead of two minutes into a run. Yeah. No. Like, if you want to see the game pushed to its limits, go and watch a TAS of this track. Yeah, there was, there was a TAS that um, was developed a while back, but unfortunately it desynced, um, which is actually kind of funny, but it makes it most of the way to the end. And it, I don't know, it looks pretty insane. Um, but even like top runs of this, um, so for example, the Staff Ghost, which this course's Staff Ghost is fairly hard. The Staff Ghosts are like the best time attack times that the developers ever achieved during the... Okay, uh, I'll yeah. stop going cool. for that. Like to, like, to be honest, all of the Staff Ghosts in this game are relatively strong. Like, yeah. com compared to what you'd expect in a racing game, the Staff Ghosts in this game are actually really difficult. Yeah. So, uh, the Staff Ghost on this course is 2 minutes and 57 seconds, and for comparison, the world record is a minute 35. Um, so it's almost twice as fast. Uh, it's also the only course where the max speed record is faster than the snaking record, which... We didn't really talk much about snaking, but in general, snaking is much faster. Um, people just... It's a different category because, um... Most of the time, people don't really like to do it because it's really hard on your hands. Um, we might show it off at the end of the run if there's time, possibly. Yeah, for like, like 30 seconds. Snaking is actually considered something of a health hazard. Like, yeah. if you're grinding attempts for hours and hours, then you're going to actually cause damage to your hands and wrists. Yeah, assuming you're not careful. Like, if you tense up too much. Yeah. Assuming you take care of your hands, it's fine. Um, but, yeah, so when you stack shift boost together, like, you can get, like, there he was going almost 3,000. Um, the shift boosts after the dive are fairly easy because um, the ground like curves down perfectly and the faster you're going, the slower um, you fall in the air, so it's easier to get back on track. But if you change them together, you can get above 3,000. Um, other than that, he's just kind of boosting through and taking the paths that give him refiller and boost. It's like he goes on one for a bit to get a booster, and then he switches paths right after um, to get a full refill and another boost, or another boost plate, I mean.
Never missed that during practice. That's really yeah. surprising. Yeah, those those types of deaths are pretty rare. Um, on that like on that dive, particularly. Oh yeah, so something um, kind of interesting about this course is um, something we're not entirely sure about yet. Um, but this may this is a course where um, one of the heavier uh, body parts than Gallant uh, might be useful. Um, we did some testing on it, and essentially, since heavier vehicles get more speed from a uh, shift boost, um, the disadvantage that it has regarding like handling and stuff like that don't really play a part because this course is pretty straight. Um, so currently, since or currently. Uh, Black Bull, Fat Shark, Gallant Star, and Quick Star hold all the records except for one course. But this might be a course that um, a different vehicle could be used. Um, the last course is later in this couple to talk about when I get there. But um. oh, something I didn't explain. There's something called Boost State MT. Um, where essentially, if you're going really fast, like above 2,000, then um, if you're even if you're boosting, you still won't gain speed from a. Uh, you still won't gain speed from boosting. So you basically you boost for a moment and then you turn off the engine right after, because um, when you're in boost state, your acceleration is actually lower, and your acceleration number plays a part in how good your MT is. Um, so he boosts for just a minute and then turns off the engine. I kind of forgot to mention it, but you see it especially like right after the shift boost after the dive. Um, that's something that's also important because you don't want to be boosting while you get a shift boost since your acceleration is lower and your acceleration plays a part in how much speed you get from a shift boost. So you pretty much only want to boost in places that you're not going to be shift boosting, um, that you know you're not going to for that time. Uh, so this is lateral shift. Basically there's a bunch of places in the course where the course shifts to the side for like a little bit like that. And if you drive over the corner just right, you can get a shift boost. Uh, these ones are probably some of the easiest shift boosts in the game to get. Um, but it's still easy to just like mess up on any single one of them, and also, you go very, very fast on this course, so there's a lot of like, it's really hard to control. Yeah, and there is at least one spot in this stage as well where yeah. if you're going too fast, so right like here, right here, you'll come off the track. Yeah, if you're going above 1800, you'll lift off the track, which is actually what he did there on purpose. He just waited a bit. Um, he waited a bit and like slowed down to 1800, and then he did an MTS into shift boost since it was still like bending down, and that was just like another thing to go fast. So like if you keep track of where he's boosting, like he doesn't boost at all through here. Um, he doesn't boost because it would still be active if you went for that one. Um, you can maybe boost there, but like here is already in boost state from the booster, so it doesn't really matter. So there's really not very many places that you want to boost, and they actually slow you down. Um, I believe the um, the world record for this course and other like a couple other top times don't use any boost at all. Um, there is one place on laps two and three that a boost should be useful, um, but it's kind of using, like, Boost AMT was only discovered like several years ago, and the game's been competitively time attacked since like the game came out in 2003 or whatever. Yeah. So, um, like, basically, on that la if you boost before that last turn and boost MT it, it'll save a little bit of time. Um, but that's a fairly minor thing. And other than that, the world record doesn't boost at all. Um, so. 
Yeah, that was an acceptable time right there, 90, <laughs> one, 130. Yeah, yeah. so It'll do. the world record for that course is actually 102, and the Staff Ghost is like almost two minutes. So that's another course that the uh, like the world record is almost half as fast as the Staff Ghost, just like Trident. Yeah, well, yeah. It's first try, that's the most important thing, yeah. too. It's these, pretty easy to buy a lot, so. These huge time differences as well, it's important to note, they don't like imply that AKC is getting bad runs or driving badly. All it is testament to is just how much you can get out of this game's engine and the mechanics. Yeah. Like, it's really difficult to overstate just how much extra speed can be gained with the tech and how high the skill ceiling is. Yeah, like, you would think games like this, like IL games, you think, like, oh, you know, people, like, top times are going to be within, like, like, a tenth of a second of each other or something like that. No, like, on quite a few courses, like, the time gains, like, time differences are multiple seconds. And it's not because, like, the second place person's time is bad. It's just there's so much potential. Um, so it's it's huge. Uh, so this is undulation. Um, basically, there's there's a lot of shift boost opportunities. Um, these shift boosts at the beginning are fairly easy as well, um, since the course curves down, so you have more time to get back on the course. Um, but there's a lot of other things to this course. There's like several different side attack dives, like. Um, this, basic, this course is just lumps, so there's big lumps and small lumps. And then he travels over the small lumps by uh, hitting the jump plate and like kind of flying over them. Because if you drive over them like normal, like you might see if he misses one of the jump plates, then um, they just kind of like bounce you around and they murder your speed. Um, sometimes they throw you off the course too if you're going very fast. Um, it's especially more dangerous like the second set. Um, oh yeah, also, yeah. those poles, all, all those poles have collisions, so if you hit them, you'll get pushed out of the way. Yeah, like, nothing's really purely aesthetic in these tracks. Like, if there's an object, it's likely solid. Yeah. Oh, well. yeah. So, like, you can see here, they're just kind of, like, bouncing around. And if you're, the faster you're going, the more dangerous those lumps are. If you're going, like, normal driving speed, they, they seem fine. You don't even think about them, but... Yeah, so he kind of has to like navigate the round, and sometimes he'll have to like turn back. <laughs> oh, he sa <laughs> barely saved it. Uh, Not being very lucky here so far. Yeah. So like you would think you just have like a setup to like hit it, and jump plate at the same time or like same place or whatever. But there's so many factors that go into play. It's exactly like how you're launched. Like your exact angle matters. Your exact speed matters. Your exact. Oh yeah, you can also bounce on those ones if it happen there. Yeah, like it, it, even if you had a perfect positional setup, your speed yeah. hitting it is never going to be the same, and that has one of the biggest impacts on where you actually go. Yeah, your speed, your angle, a uh, bunch of different things like how you hit, like where you hit the jump plate, whether or not you're in boost state. Because if you're boosting, um, your speed is going to be, you get a lot more height out of it. I mean. So up next is going to be um, Dragon Slope. So basically this course is it's the one course I was saying earlier where the world record isn't with one of the top four vehicles. Um, it's another custom vehicle. It uses the same parts as uh, Gallant Star, except it uses the heaviest engine in the game. And the reason why is because there's a gigantic dive where you build up a ton of speed from side attacks. And the, more, the heavier you are, the more speed you get from side attacks. And then since it has lower acceleration, you maintain that speed a lot longer. So it kind of outweighs the advantages that um, the Titan G4, the other engine, has, um, which usually it's got like, the fact that it has a higher acceleration, it's like a perfect sweet spot where um, it's got good enough acceleration to um, make better use of like boosting and stuff like that than the heavier engines, which technically have a stronger boost strength. Um, but on this course, it doesn't matter. So you build up so much speed from this dive. So like he was going, I think I saw 4,000 there for a moment, maybe. Um, Also, if you look at the mini-map, um, the course is called Dragon Slope because it's kind of designed to look like a dragon's head. Uh, you can see like the little curve on the bottom left is like kind of its snout or whatever. It's kind of kind of hard to see, but that's what it's supposed to look like anyway. Um, also, interestingly, the mini-map is shown from the side instead of top down. Uh, you can see like, um, oh, so that was a nice MTF shift boost there. Yeah. Really fast. Oh, another thing about the glitched up slope physics that you see there, like you can see he's like riding along the wall. But he's not actually hitting it because that's another thing about the glitched upslope physics is that um, 
you have to crash into a wall like really hard for it to actually uh, hit you. So, yeah, a couple of things I'd like to know about this stage. Um, during the huge descent there, you don't actually have completely free reign of where to go because there are a couple of um, checkpoints you need to avoid. Otherwise, oh, yeah. the game will consider you off course and yeah. the run's just over. There's a couple kill planes. Uh, you yeah. they're especially an issue at the very beginning. Uh, sometimes, like since you MTS off the edge, so you can start out at an angle, and so you start out going faster. If your MTS is like too sharp, then you'll hit the kill plane on the right side. Yeah. Um, and then, like after the slope here, we've seen in the first two laps, it's a good instance of having a very wide ice section, and the ice section is basically going to remove all of your grip and make um, MTSing incredibly strong. Yeah. Um, so the course is supposed to like you can see in the mini map in the bottom right. There's supposed to be like several different jumps that you land on as you're like falling. So like you go from one to the next. But with the MTS and a side attack dive, you just skip all of them all together. That was a good time. Almost sub two. Two or one's good. I was hoping for sub two, but oh well. Yeah, so up next is going to be the course with the most walls in this entire cup, but it's probably still the hardest course. Um, it's Slimline Slits, basically. It's like Rainbow Road, except a lot worse. Uh, I don't know where the idea of like Rainbow Road being really scary or hard is, but. Um, this game's Rainbow Road is actually hard. Basically, it's super narrow, and there's a lot of like really tight turns, and there's a couple places where you can like, uh, if you're going too fast, you fall off and die. Um, it's just really easy to crash into a bunch of walls and stuff. Uh, he's actually going to be using Sonic Phantom here, where um, essentially this vehicle, uh, it's not like one of the top two vehicles, but it um, it has a lot better control, so it's a lot better for handling the tight turns and stuff like that. Uh, the world record actually uses Black Bull, and it's got some pretty insane jumps and stuff. But um, I believe AK AKC's PB is with. Uh, pretty Star, which is a custom vehicle um, that's like pretty light and has pretty good steering. But instead of using that, it would just take too long to load the uh, custom vehicles. So this vehicle will be faster overall. Um, that's a very good beginner vehicle. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't have all the custom parts yet. Yeah. So this course is actually pretty cool in the sense that um, a lot of vehicles can be competitive for a lot of people for a while. Um, like I think. You probably need like a top 50 or so time to like start getting times that are better than um, what some of the best. Um, we keep like a spreadsheet of all the best times with every vehicle and every course. And like to start beating some vehicles like this and Death Anchor and a couple of the other fairly good, like not quite Fat Shark or Black Bolt vehicles, but like that are kind of close. You need probably a top 50 or like maybe even. In fact, I think Great Star has a better time than Fat Shark, which is one of the few courses that uh, Fat Shark and Black Bolt don't have the top two times. Um, and I think that time's like a low 140, so you probably need like rank 20 something to beat that. Um. The um, final major turn of the course as well is possibly the largest offender in this game for when we've been talking about you need to be below a certain speed value or you'll just come straight off the course. Pretty much if you're above 1200 at that section, you'll just come straight off. Yeah, and actually like, you're not quite upside down, but you're like sideways. It's kind of hard to like see, but currently... So it's right here. Yeah. So he like slows down until just for a bit. He actually got a shift boost there, which is cool. Oh. oh. Yeah, the rail slides on this course are also awful. Um, that would have been really good. That would have been a 145, which would have been a crazy good run. Even yeah. a one, even sub 150 is pretty solid, and that's what you got even after that big mistake. Yeah, the spreadsheet record with this is a 142, I believe. 140, was it? About 142. Okay, yeah. So within a couple seconds of the best time, or it would have been if you'd gotten the rail slide. So this is going to be AX Cup. Um, it's the final cup of the. Oh, <laughs> wrong timing. Yeah, uh, it's the final cup in the um, in the game. These are the courses that are featured in the arcade version of the game, the F-Zero AX. Um, a lot of these courses have like a lot of turns, a lot of energy refill, and like I don't know, just like something about the turns just kind of feels like you could be like driving it with the steering wheel. Um, but it has a lot of cool courses. It generally has most of my favorite courses because I like having a lot of refill because I like boosting a lot. Um, so. When this game was run three years ago, when AKC was doing this course, um, there's a pretty crazy suicide, um, and Nigleria offered him a pizza uh, for getting the suicide, and he got it, so he got the pizza. So um, I'm not gonna offer the pizza, but oh, please, please do. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll buy you a pizza. <laughs> a couple slices is fine. I'll be right. nice. <laughs> um, yeah, this was also like a couple years ago when like. People weren't like as consistent with a lot of the things in the game, so like um, a lot of the suicides weren't nearly as common. So it was pretty much like 
the ordeal one was pretty free, probably. And then I don't even know if you guys got any other suicides in the run. Um, but this is like probably like the biggest super suicide. Um, is your energy gonna be fine? All right. Here we go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Stuck the landing too. <laughs> That was a perfect suicide. <laughs> Pepperoni and bacon, please. All right. All right. <laughs> so um, this is uh, this is gonna be meteor stream here. Um, this course is another course with um, Gallant Star. It has a potential for a lot of different uh, shift boosts, like MTS and shift boost opportunities. Um, it's a really fun course if you're playing it right because you go really fast. Um, yeah, depending on a lot of shift boosts that. Yeah. It aren't exactly easy, but yeah, they're not very consistent. Um, but so, some of them are more consistent than others, um, and ultimately, it really just comes does come down to how good you are. Like, there's there's no like actual randomness in the game. Um, so that's a shame. Yeah. First one is right here. If he gets it, uh, if you tap A at just the right time, you can get a ship boost or sometimes two. Um, so a little dive here, and then there's two MTS and ship boosts right there, and then right there. You can also get like a strafe shift boost if you like strafe and side attack over that little like bend in the ground. You can catch air. Um, if you're not very consistent at that shift boost to that like little ice section there, you can also just boost straight through. And you can get a lot of speed out of that. Um, like that's what I do in my personal best on boost laps. Yeah, he got that there. A minor one sure. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Might have been a boost state, I think. One thing that's like a suicide? little odd I found about um, AX Cup. Yeah, suicide. There you go. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so. So, like I say, sorry. A thing I find a little odd about AX Cup as well is that the first two tracks here, they've like been very short tracks. That is not going to remain the same throughout the remainder of AX Cup. Yeah. Um, two courses from now and the course after that are the two longest courses in the game. Um, but firstly, this, this course, Cylinder Wave, um, it's another cylinder course, uh, kind of like um, Cylinder Knot, except it's got a few less shift boost opportunities, but it's got some kind of other things about it. Um, a lot of the course is like a little bit wider. Um, there's some places where it gets narrow, like narrow tubes and stuff around some turns, but uh, in the wider sections, it drives a lot more reasonably. So it's a lot less frustrating of a course to play, for sure. Um, but a couple things I want to shout out. First of all, um, for anyone interested, Oh, that was nice. Little MTS into ship boost there. That's actually like a fairly new, um, newly discovered one. Shout out to Brave. Yeah. Um, but a couple of things. For anyone who's interested in learning this run, uh, AKC actually made a ridiculously comprehensive max speed guide that came out to like 53 pages. Um, if you search like uh, F0GX max speed guide AKC12, there'll be a couple of things that come up. There should be a link to it on the F0 Reddit which you guys should also check out. Oh, there's another little shift boost there that he got. Ah, uh, that's gonna kill my speed, oh, though. Oh, okay. Well, he saved it, at least. That's what matters. <laughs> so he was going too fast there. Um, which is always a terrible fate. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we have that guide. Uh, it pretty much covers like all matters of general tech in the game uh, in extremely comprehensive detail. Um, there's also the F0 Reddit, which where stuff gets posted, but we also have a link to the um, the F0 Discord, which is where we talk about race or like speedrunning, both this game and all the other ones too. F0X, uh, Super Nintendo, Max Velocity, Climax, um, whatever the last one is. I'm drawing a blank. The other GBA one, um, but Max, Max Velocity. Yeah, that one, Climax, and what else? Oh, GP Legend. Oh right, Grand, yeah, Grand Prix Legend. Okay, so there's channels for all those. So. There's a link to that in the F0 forums, I'm pretty sure. And then finally, the um, since most of the competition for all the games is just time attack, the ladders are on f0central.org. Um, so be sure to check that out. And that's where, if you were interested in playing, um, you could put times up there and stuff like that. Yeah, 147, despite that slow all down was. Yeah, that was, that was that. really good. Nice 30 on the third lap. Oh, yeah, very good. 
And even the 38 on the opener, those were both fantastic. That could have been like, if your third lap was the same as your second, which I might have been even faster, assuming you had like messed that up, because you would have come up with so much speed. That could have been like uh, sub 140 maybe, or low 140. Which would be PB if I got the sub. Oh really? What's yeah. your PB? 140, true 54, something like okay. that. Yeah. So had that giant mistake not happened, that could have been close to a PB. Yeah. So this is Thunder Road. It's probably the longest course up to this point. Uh, it's either this one or Trident, but I think this course is longer. Um, this course has a lot of boosters, a lot of refiller. There's several different places with opportunities for um, some rail slides, which, like I said, are pretty uncommon, um, except for like at the end of a course. Um, also, like varying degrees of difficulty. Like you can do one on the right side through this hallway. Um, mostly, if the ground like curves away at the end of the rail, that's um, the best place to do it. Uh, but a lot of the difficulty of this course comes down to MTS chaining, um, which. Like I, I think I said before, um, Gallant Star is like the hardest vehicle to MTS chain with because its grip is so strong. Um, so it's very easy to like consistently keep losing grip. There's the second rail slide there, and you like you lose a bit of speed, but um, you get more speed from this. Like you make better use of the dive if you're going a little bit slower when you start. So the speed gain that you get temporarily from the MTS and then the some speed that you get back from the dive um, makes up for exiting the rail slide a little weakly. And the third one, you can do a rail slide on this one. So yeah, you can see like in all three cases, that one you didn't exit super well, but basically the ground curves away from him, so you get a little bit of opportunity to uh, get your speed back up, or like to save some of the speed rather. Didn't lose any speed there, just grinded the wall. Yeah. Yeah, that was an unintentional rail slide. Yeah, there's a little skip you can do there. Uh, he he went forward on lap one as well, but he, I think, hit a wall on the like. Yeah, right know. before. Yeah, the so drop. He decided not to go for it. It's it's extremely precise on lap one. Um, I've never even gotten it once. I haven't gone for it too much, but I've never gotten it. So. Um. Yeah, so this course is kind of interesting. There's like a couple courses that have several vehicles that are relatively competitive, but outside of like a massive improvement that this course recently got by like six seconds, um, before that happened, this course was pretty competitive between um, uh, Gallant Star, Black Bull, and Quick Star. I'm pretty sure the Quick Star record is a 234, I think. I'm pretty sure the Black Bull record is also a 234. And then um, the record for a while in this course with Gallant was a 227. And I, I don't think anyone else had sub 230. Um, up until recently, both Super Sanic and Brave improved the time significantly. I think Brave got down like a 2.23 and then Sanic pulled out a 2.21. Um, but until that happened, they were all pretty uh, pretty competitive. Also, that was a, that's another good, another place for a really good rail slide at the end. Just because like the ground... Uh, the ground like leads right up to you. So the hardest part about like setting up a good rail slide is making sure that you approach the wall when you're close to it. and. Uh, Basically, so the wall does that for you, so it's really easy to get a really fast one. Um, so this is Green Plant Spiral. It's my favorite course in the game, personally. Mine think, as well. Yeah. Uh, AKC used to have the record here until... Uh, Two different occasions, yeah. yeah until and recently, or I guess like about a year ago or so, CGN came in and improved the record by like eight seconds, switching to Gallant Star instead of Quick. Um, and since then, a couple of other people have gotten better than AKC's time, but um, basically... It has a lot of turns, which is really good for Quick Star because you're MTSing a lot of them. But it also has like a lot of refiller and a lot of boosters as well. So, um, since normally when you exit an MTS, you come out a little bit slower. Uh, it's really hard to get up to speed, like up to 15, 16, 1700 kilometers an hour with Quick, um, just because like you're MTSing so much. But um, since there's so many boosters and so much energy, then you can you can consistently get up to those speeds anyway, uh, which is just fun. Um, it also has several different skips, like you saw the first one at the beginning. Um, I'll explain more about it when he gets back to it next lap. But um, There's also a couple other skips that I'll point out. Um, but a lot of this course for lap one is just about MTS chaining cleanly. Um, there's a few MTS into shift boost spots you can get both on the opener and on boost laps. Um,
Yeah, 106 opener is pretty solid. Um, Not bad. Yeah. So like right there. Um, so I haven't really explained exactly how skips work, um, but one of the big factors about skips are um, basically the the game keeps track of. Oh, there's another little skip here. You just skip that little platform. Uh, you can do that one on lap one as well, but um, it's slightly slower maybe than a different strat where you get a shift boost on that platform. Um, but basically, if you like, your game keeps track of checkpoints pretty commonly on the course, and it lets you skip like a certain number because it understands like you might like drive over like a little corner through the air. Uh, but if you skip too many, then you'll blow up when you hit the ground. Um, also, this little skip here. Actually, a big one, rather. Yeah, that one's really cool. Uh, it's also really hard. So props to AKC for that. Um, but basically, you can only skip like a certain number. Um, so f for some way, like when you're doing this one, it like updates your position somewhere in the middle of the air to being like halfway around the skip. Or like halfway around like the bend, and then when you land, it only goes from there. Um, so, We have a $10 donation from Anonymous. Playing this game as a kid, I never thought these F-Zero speeds were possible. You got the skip again. That was really good. And a 253.2, I think that was. That was really good. I think that would be like rank 12 or 13. Something um, like that, yeah. Yeah, that was... 0.1 seconds from beating my PB, and that's like probably one of my best PBs. So <laughs> that's really good. Not surprising, I guess, since you had the record, but you know. So um, here's Sonic Oval. This will be the last course in the game. Um, it's also the shortest course. It's just an oval with a bunch of boosters. Um, he's going to be using Black Bowl here um, and just basically MTS training. Uh, the world record is with Black Bowl. It uses a pretty insane suicide finish. Um, he might go for it once just to like show it off. <laughs> if your energy is right, just so they could, I don't know, it's up to you. But um, he won't get it because the success rate is like one in a hundred. But just so you could like see what it does, um, if he wants to, I won't make him. But um, so that, I'll try it. Yeah, that suicide is possible with uh, Black Bull and with Fat Shark. Um, so Fat Shark or Black Bull is definitely the fastest vehicle for this course. But if you're not going for the suicide, then um, Quick Star is probably the fastest vehicle. I believe Quickstar has like the second and third place times on the course, and quite a few other top times, um, just because it makes the best use of the MTS training. But yeah, so that's basically what happens. Except you get really lucky and you pinball around the last corner and fly across the finish line. So like I said, he wouldn't get it, but that's what it looks like. Um, it's pretty insane when it happens. So um, Yeah, other than that, um, once he crosses the finish line on the third lap, that'll be time. I'll call it. But And time. Really good. What was the time on the run? Uh, it's a 111.32. Uh, satisfactory. A few too many deaths, but showed off a lot of cool stuff, so I'm very happy. And before I go, um... Would it be possible for us to show off, like, about a minute for snaking, just to show it off really quick? Since we're ahead. All right, that was F Zero GX. Uh, before I go, just quick shout outs to Yoshi Fan Twenty Eight. He he recently updated the website before; it was broken and kind of messy. Oh, but yeah. now it looks he's improved real the nice. website significantly. And he's up, done other really cool coding projects. And shout outs to the entire F Zero community for playing and discovering out this game. All right, thank you.
All right, and that was F-Zero GX from AKC-12.